Hello everyone, I'm Governor Mara Dixon and I'm the Managing Director for Government Solutions. Now, as some of you would have known, Government Solutions is a consulting firm that assists health professionals such as doctors with product sourcing strategies as well as the starting and the managing of medical laboratories. Now, today I just want to talk to you about uh, this book on microbiology. Just going to show you the front page of the book. It's a fourth edition, Sherry's Medical Microbiology and Introduction to Infectious Diseases. This is a book by Kenneth J. Ryan and C. George Ray. And some more information right here. So that, that's the front page of the book. I guess there are some images here of, of pathogens right here. Alright, so I'm just going to give you an idea of so these are the the editors, Kenneth J. Ryan as I mentioned and C. George Ray. Both of them are medical doctors, professor of pathology, clinical professor of pathology, College of Medicine, University of Arizona. And the consulting editor, which is John C. Sherris, which is also a professor in the Department of Microbiology, School of Medicine, University of, of Washington. And here you have the authors here. So I'm just going to show you um, table of contents so you have an idea as to what exactly is in this book. So you have the overview, which is chapter one. Then you have part one, which deals with the bacterial cell. Chapter two is about bacterial structures. Chapter three is bacterial processes. Chapter four is bacterial genetics. Then you have part two, which has to do with the biology of viruses. So chapter five is about virus structure. Chapter six is virus multiplication and chapter 7 is viral genetics so that's part 2 which has to do with the biology of viruses part 1 was the bacterial cell part 3 now is the host parasite interaction so chapter 8 is the immune response to infection And chapter 9 is normal microbial flora. Chapter 10 has to do with host parasite relationships. That's with for parasitic infections. And you have part 4. Part 4 is the spread and control of infection. So you're talking about sterilization and disinfection. Epidemiology of infectious diseases, antibacterial and antiviral agents, antimicrobial resistance, principles of laboratory diagnosis of infectious diseases. And part five is about pathogenic bacteria. So you're talking about Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Enterococci, Coronabacterium, Listeria, and Bacillus, Clostridium, Peptostreptococcus. Bacteria and other anaerobes. Nice here. Yeah. So that's the idea of what the book is all about. And you have part. You have several parts. Uh, I gave you that one. the last one was part five. Which talks about enterobacteria, say Vibrio. Campylobacter and Helicobacter, Pseudomonas, Haemophilus, and Bardetella, Mycoplasma, and Europlasma, Legionella, Chlamydia, and the whole works, Plaque. Now, part 6 is about pathogenic viruses, part 7, Plague, Plague and other um, bacterial, Zoonotic. Viruses, diseases rather, my apologies, plague, that's the name of the disease, and pathogenic viruses, part 6, 
Part 7 is about pathogenic um, fungi. Part 8 is about parasites. Part 9 is local and systemic infections. So that basically covers what the book is all about. So I'm just going to jump into the overview to give you an idea of what the overview is all about. It's talking about Sir William Osler, the great physician who wrote the words. Human humanity has but three great enemies, fever, famine, and war. Of these by far the greatest by far the most terrible is fever. Fever which results from infection. So this one talks about the signs of my medical microbiology. It dates back to the pioneering studies of Pasteur and Koch, who isolated specific agents and proved that they could cause diseases by introducing the experimental methods. So these methods were developed, which lead to the first golden age of microbiology. It was 1875 to 1910. So this table here shows the distinctive features of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So you talk about the cell components of the nucleus, the extra chromosomal DNA, organelles in cytoplasm, cytoplasmic membrane, the whole works. So you talk about the differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. With ribosomes, the 70 S in cytoplasm for prokaryotes for ribosomes. For eukaryotes, it's 80 S in cytoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So, talking about treatment and prevention, the summary. We'll just go back up and read the diagnosis. So the clinical aspects of infectious disease, manifestations, fever, pain, and swelling are the universal signs of infection. Beyond this, the particular organs involved and the spread of the process dominate the signs and symptoms of disease. Cough, diarrhea, and mental confusion present represent disruption of the three different body systems and on the basis of clinical experience, physicians have become familiar with the range of behavior of the major pathogens. So if the signs and symptoms overlap considerably, but skilled physicians can use their knowledge to begin a deductive process leading to a list, to a list of suspected pathogens and a strategy to make a specific diagnosis to provide, provide patient care. So now the diagnosis, the major difference between infectious and other diseases is that the probabilities described above can be specifically resolved often overnight. Most microorganisms can be isolated from the patient, grown in an artificial culture, and identified. Others can be seen microscopically or detected by measuring the host specific immune response. Preferred modalities of diagnosis for each agent have been developed and are available in clinic, hospital, and public health laboratories all over the world. So the empiric diagnosis made on the basis of clinical findings can be confirmed and the treatment plan modified accordingly. The new molecular methods will detect molecular structures. Our, gene, our genes of the agent are not yet practical for most infectious diseases. So that's a diagnosis, treatment now, therapeutic methods of remarkable potency and specificity have become available for the treatment of bacterial infections. So you're talking about the treatment, the prevention, that's another section, and the overall summary of infectious disease. So I'm going to just read a summary. Infectious diseases remain as important and fascinating as ever. 
where does where else do we find the emergence of new diseases together with improved understanding of the old ones at a time when the revolution in molecular biology and genetics has brought us to the threshold of new and novel means of infection control the perpetrators of bioterrorism threaten us with diseases we have already conquered Meeting this challenge requires a secure knowledge of the pathogenic organisms and how they produce disease, as well as understanding the clinical aspects of these diseases in the collective judgment of the authors. This book basically provides the um, principles and facts that are required for students and medicine to understand the most important infectious disease. So that's a basic overview of the book. And part one, it talks about the bacterial cell. Chapter one has to do with bacterial structure. Chapter three is bacterial processes. Chapter four is the bacterial genetics. All right, so that's the overview. I hope this information is helpful to you. And if you need more information, you can Google Governor Mara Dixon or Government Solutions. You can also visit Amazon.com where we have some books there, Personalizer Medical Lab and Seals in Laboratory Medicine. Thank you.